All right, this is a quick demo tutorial on how to do screen casting of audio applications using QuickTime Player. The challenge here is that QuickTime Player usually only will allow for kind of your, your built-in output as the audio input or a mic input, but not both. So we need to find a way to get QuickTime Player to see all of that audio. I would say the common way to do that is to use uh, Soundflower. So here's Cycling 74's website where you can download Soundflower. And Soundflower appears as an audio device on your computer and you can reroute audio to other audio devices. And so in this case uh, there's a program called Soundflower Bed which is what this little guy is. And we're redirecting the audio that's going to Soundflower back to the built-in output so I can hear it. Also there's another device, Screencasting, and we could use that. Um, so let's see here. The next thing we need to do after that is to make sure that we have some sort of mic device and Soundflower kind of to, built together into one thing that we can choose in MainStage or QuickTime. So what we're going to do is um, we're going to go ahead and go to Audio MIDI Setup. And you want to make sure that the audio device is showing. So here's my MIDI window, here's my audio window, click on the audio window. We want to use the plus side down here to create a new aggregate device. And here we can pick of any of the things that are showing and it will make a new audio device that uses those inputs. And so we could kind of, you know, rename them if we wanted to. You can That way you can tell them apart. Okay. And so we've got those things there. We have aggregate device. We could name it something memorable. Memorable name. Uh, that's fun. All right, and in this case, I don't need that device, so we'll get rid of it. Okay, we're done with audio MIDI. So the aggregate device I have set up for this is called screencasting, and the next thing we need to go to is main stage and make sure that in main stage it is set up to use the screencasting audio device as its output. Okay, so we've, I've already got that set up. And then lastly, we're going to go to QuickTime, and I can't show you this, but here under New Screen Recording, we pick that. There is a um, control window that pops up with a drop-down for its audio device. We also want to make sure that's screencasting. And then we go ahead and start the screen recording, and we are good to go. Now, the one glitch to this setup is that QuickTime's final file uh, is a four-channel audio file. So QuickTime is multi-channel aware, and so if you do four channels of recording, it ends up with a four-channel audio file uh, attached to the video. YouTube and Facebook don't handle this well. They just don't know what to do with it. They think it might be surround sound. They just don't know. And so I use Handbrake, which you can also download from the internet, to recode those and also recompress them. I usually use the high-profile option and uh, we'll go down to the audio setting after we pick our input document. I just picked a random one that I have here. Um, and make sure that right here it would have a four channel track instead of two channels we're going to re-encode that down to stereo. Okay, and then we'd start that encoding. We'd have a final file that was more compressed than QuickTime's screen recording so it's going to upload faster and it's back down to stereo. Alright, that's it. That's a quick uh, overview of how that works. If you have any questions, uh, please hit me up in the comments. Thanks.